Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about various types of Nova and basically distinguish between them. We're going to briefly simulate them using the Universe Sandbox and well, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So anyway, so the sun just went supernova and destroyed the entire solar system, this will very likely never happen, because our sun is not massive enough to create a supernova. But nevertheless, there's quite a lot of supernova in the universe sandbox uh, that you can create using a variety of tools. So today we're going to be uh, discussing the difference between nova, supernova, different types of supernova, and hypernova. These are basically kind of similar, but not really. The idea of nova, or the word nova just means new. In this case, it refers to a new star that suddenly forms in the sky because back in the days, the ancients, when they saw an explosion, um, specifically when they actually saw the supernova explosion, they uh, thought it was a creation of a new star because it was suddenly so bright and would last for anywhere from a few hours to a few days and they misunderstood the principle and thought it was, oh, okay, well, nothing happened now, but they basically thought because of the sudden increase in brightness that it was essentially a new star creation. And more recently, uh, the scientists actually discovered the origin of one of the ancient nova that the Korean astronomers were able to detect back in 1400s, and they were actually able to trace back the uh, material that was released by the nova and to pinpoint where the star was located and uh, basically what happened and kind of explain it scientifically. Now, we're going to be talking a little bit about all of these concepts, but in maybe not so much detail. We're just going to demonstrate them. Let's start with Nova, just Nova. Now, this is the one that the Korean astronomers were able to detect in the skies and the way the nova usually works is it has to have two stars and normally well not normally but almost always i'm not saying always but almost always um, one of these stars is very large so in this case i picked arcturus which is um, much much bigger than our sun there's our sun right there it's very tiny and um, these are inflated stars that are basically going through the later stages of their life and they'll usually have a, or they'll almost always have a partner. And in this case, it's going to be a white dwarf partner. Now, these two stars will actually orbit around one another relatively closely. And because um, the white dwarf is much smaller and also a lot, a lot more dense, it's going to slowly seep uh, some of the materials from the larger star. It basically is going to start absorbing some of the materials, which you can see doing it right now. And as this material falls onto the surface of the white dwarf, it accumulates and it creates a kind of a ring around it. It's basically a accretion disk. And this accretion disk at some point reaches the um, mass needed for a nuclear reaction. When that occurs, you can imagine something explosive happens. And this is when the uh, material around um, the white dwarf actually explodes. Now, I can't really explode these, but I could explode the star and create a temporary supernova. But obviously, it's not as, as bright as supernova. Now, it didn't actually explode in this case. Um, but the idea here is that it basically releases... Here, we're going we're to do this differently. It releases a tremendous amount of power... And all of this power that I'm trying to simulate right now by basically releasing these spheres of particles, all of this power is essentially a nuclear explosion. Not a super large one, but large enough to be able to, to be seen from far, far away. So this is what a nova would be like. And it happens uh, quite, quite a lot, and it actually happens and will happen again in the system as the uh, white dwarf accumulates more and more material, but neither the white dwarf nor the other star disappear. They basically just kind of create this nuclear explosion and that's it. This star becomes a little bit less massive. This star does not change almost at all. It might even become a little bit more massive and you just get an explosion. Nova explains. Let's go to the more common concept of supernova. Now, there's two types of supernova. One is slightly easier to understand. It's basically based on the white dwarf explosion. This is called type 1 supernova. If I were to place a white dwarf, the closest to us is Sirius B, 
and I were to um, make it more massive, and this usually happens when the white dwarf starts accumulating more and more mass from its partner, just like in the previous simulation. At some point, when it reaches 1.39 masses of the sun, it becomes really small and then reaches the ultimate limit of its mass known as Chandrasekhar limit. And then, basically, goes supernova. This is type 1 supernova. It's not the most um, explosive event, it's not the most energetic event, but it is quite uh, dramatic, because the entire star get, basically gets destroyed. And these happen uh, only in binary systems, because the white dwarf needs to acquire mass from somewhere, and usually it's another star that's next to it. A type 2 supernova can happen anywhere, and normally these happen in very, very large stars, like for example, Rigel. Uh, when a star over a certain mass um, goes through its life cycle and at some point reaches old age, it basically cannot handle the pressure from its mass anymore because uh, the nuclear reaction on the inside doesn't produce enough energy. And at this point, let's actually just change this to billions of years. At this point, it is going to essentially explode. It's a very, very explosive process, but also very unpredictable. It can kind of actually happen uh, in many different ways and can sometimes end up in a neutron star, sometimes end up in a black hole if there's more mass, and sometimes uh, completely destroy the entire star, depending on the original parameters of the star that's just exploded. And in this case, I believe the Rigel is going to become a neutron star, right? Yeah, it became a neutron star. Or no, wait, it became a white dwarf. Huh, interesting. Maybe it didn't have enough mass. So anyway, so that's type 2 supernova. And the last concept we're going to talk about is called hypernova, also known as collapsar. And this is a very, very energetic supernova, usually the most energetic event you can kind of witness in the universe. And these superluminous supernova usually occur in extremely, extremely large stars. In this case, something that would be similar to, let's just pick the most massive star we know. Let's pick the R136A1. This star is uh, several hundred masses of the sun. And when this star explodes, it's probably going to create a collapse star. And in this case, um, these are usually super bright. They create a tremendous amount of X-rays and other types of super highly powerful radiation. And they collapse to form a rotating black hole that, that instantly emits these energetic jets and is surrounded by accretion disk. Now, we unfortunately cannot simulate this in the game because it's just not going to happen that way, but we can obviously do the collapse hour or the hypernova. And there is that black hole right in the middle as soon as it goes supernova or hypernova, sorry. There is the black hole in the middle and basically spins really fast and it has the accretion disk around it, which maybe I could create by adding a ring to it, so there's going to be some sort of an accretion disk here. And also these uh, jets that unfortunately I can't really generate here, but they're also going to be there. Oh, my ring disappeared. No. And so anyway, that's basically a collapse are also known as a hypernova. And uh, so that's kind of the main difference between these three events. They're kind of powerful, they're super, super strong. And they are definitely, so here's actually another example of type 1A supernova, where a Sirius B white dwarf is going to acquire enough mass and then go type 1A supernova. So these are usually the most energetic, most visible events and create objects that kind of look like stars, but obviously also release a tremendous amount of materials into other space. And this is actually how all of the non-hydrogen, non-helium material is made. So things like iron, things like calcium, uh, things that are like oxygen, and basically the majority of stuff in your uh, in your body was made, well, not the majority, but the vast, vast uh, part of your body was made in a supernova something like 5 billion years ago. And these particles then accumulated and created our solar system and then created you and me. So we are all kind of a result of a supernova. We just don't really know what kind, but very likely type 2 supernova. 
And anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video and explain these differences between these three uh, somewhat similar but somewhat unusually different events. Maybe in the future we'll learn more about them and might witness even more. Some of them might even be close to us. But for now, that's all we know and that's all we're going to talk about. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Subscribe if you still haven't and share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye bye.